So in an earlier video, I was looking at these uh, Sonoff S31 switches and was doing some reprogramming, but one of the, uh, the pain points of that was actually getting a good connection onto the uh, pin pads here. And so I was, you know, soldering headers on, but then whenever I'd try to remove those and desolder the pins, it's having a lot of problems with the pads lifting and, you know, I didn't really want to destroy anything. And so uh, there's got to be a better way, right? And ultimately the problem is, is we got to get the programmer uh, connected to these pins. And they actually, you know, these are designed to work uh, in a system where you don't have to make permanent contact, you just have to make temporary contact to these pads. And there's a well-known solution to this, which is pogo pins. And so it turns out they do sell little pogo pin headers and they look like this. And so this little eight pin pogo pin header, um, I only need six of them, but I figured we'd, uh, we'd whip up a little programmer interface so that we can have a little adapter to make good connection between one of our USB programmers and any sort of uh, header that we come across. Now, if you've never seen how a pogo pin works, they're just a regular little pin, but they've just got a little spring-loaded tip so that you can press them into the contacts um, and get a good connection with various levels of pressure. Now, there are a lot of designs for little programmers on like Thingiverse and, and other 3D printing websites, but most of them just use a regular pin header, and I do think that would work, but they do make these pogo pin headers, so I figured, you know, probably good to give those a shot. So um, let's get this thing wired up. This will only take a minute. I'll design a little 3D enclosure for this and I'll show you how I'm gonna use it. And here is how I plan to implement these pogo pins. So what I've got here, I've just taken one of these pogo pin headers and I've put them on some Vero board or strip board. Um, just use like two rows of Vero board and that allows me a little bit of space where I can solder a bunch of wires. So I just use a DuPont connector set of wires and on the other end, I've got the same thing, but here I've got a DuPont header. Um, I 3D printed a little bitty enclosure. You can see it's just the bottom piece here. It's got uh, places for a couple of hex nuts. That way I can thread in this bracket. Um, and then on the bottom here, you'll see this little screw and there's another little place for another little hex screw there. And then I've got a little plunger that I can put in there and it's got a, a little hole down in the bottom just for alignment purposes where this screw can go in. So um, I'll take this, I've got little slots cut out for the Vero board to set in. I've got a little cap here that just clips on. It's not super tight, just to keep everything enclosed. So with this, I can take a board, I can slide it underneath the pogo pins here. With this screw then, I can increase the tension so that it will hold that thing in place. I can then get lined up whatever pins I wanna use. Then I can take my programmer, plug it into the DuPont connectors, and I'm good to go and program this thing. It can be a bit finicky. You might be able to see um, the pressure right now, the way I've got this, the pogo pen header is not overly constrained, and so it's flexing a little bit under that tension. Uh, that becomes a little problematic with these sawn-offs because the way I have to put this thing on, um, it does require quite a bit of tension to keep this thing from easily slipping off. So what I'm probably gonna do Instead of redoing the 3D print, um, I did want to leave enough tolerance so that I didn't have to be super precise when I was cutting this thing out. I'll probably just use some hot glue to, uh, to really hold this thing firmly into place. That way, whenever I apply the tension, it's not going to, uh, to make those pogo pins can't as much. Um, but that's really all I had to show you in this video, is just introducing the concept of using these pogo pin headers and then just showing you how easy it is um, to design and assemble your own little programmer like this. You could easily modify the width if you didn't need all eight pins. The reason I left all eight pins on this thing is because different boards will have different layouts for their programming headers. Um, they may not even be in a header, so this won't be universal. There's a lot of boards that their programming pins may be in different arrangements. But, you know, this one has, you know, four pins. 
this one has six and I only need to use four of them. So with this, I can choose which pins I use and I can accommodate a variety of different kind of linear spacings with this. So that's why I left it all intact. Um, I will upload the step files for this. So if you want to take it and use it and modify it yourself, feel free. Um, but that's all I had for this video. If you've got any comments, as always, please feel free to leave your feedback down below. Thanks.